Do you struggle with capturing the beauty of realistic birds against expressive backgrounds in your watercolor paintings? Then you're in the right place. Join me in this captivating tutorial where we'll delve into the art of painting a stunning toucan while mastering the technique of creating a fluid and effortless watercolor background. Hello there, art lovers. I'm Joyce Lita D'Souza, an artist and art educator. Join me on this journey as I unveil a fantastic technique to bring our toucan and its environment to life. Whether you're a budding artist or an experienced creator, prepare to discover fresh skills and enter a realm painted with colors and brushed with creativity. The supplies used are listed in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive into the art world and begin shaping our masterpiece. I will first explain the steps of the drawing process. If you'd like to skip directly to the painting, feel free to do so. For the beak, begin with a gentle elongated curve for the upper portion. Slightly arc the tip. Form another curve, tapering it slightly towards the tip of the beak. Repeat this process for the lower part of the beak, maintaining the tapered effect. Next, draw a slight curve at the edge where the top two lines meet. For the lower part, draw a slight curve that extends to the center of the bottom part of the beak. From there, draw a straight line connecting to the lower edge of the beak. Lastly, from the center of this line, draw a small line in the opposite direction. The eye sits in a triangle shape so let's draw a triangle with curved edges that connects to the upper section of the beak. Inside this triangle, draw two circles positioned near the triangle's lower segment to represent the eye. Continue the line we drew at the bottom of the beak with a gentle downward curve. Next, extend the top area by sketching a curved V-shape that goes sideways. Join these two lines with another curved line. Now for the upper part of the head, draw an inward curve starting from the triangle's top point. Gradually make it a bit wider as it moves downward. In my drawing, I feel this part should be slightly smaller, so I will apply the same technique we've used before to make these changes. It's always helpful to refer to the reference picture as you draw and make any necessary tweaks. Remember, a well-executed drawing sets the foundation for a more impressive finished painting. I'm removing unnecessary lines using a kneaded eraser. Now let's sketch the branch. Draw a curved diagonal line starting slightly above the right side of the paper and extending towards the bottom. Your branch doesn't have to match my drawing precisely. Next, draw a leaf by creating an oval shape that concludes with two short parallel lines. Add another line for the bark, running parallel to the previous one. Outline the claws gripping the tree by drawing a pair of curved lines on each side. In the blank space, add two curves to shape the bird's body, one at the top and one at the bottom. Now that we're done with the drawing, let's dive into the painting process. I'll start by painting the background. But before we begin, if you're enjoying these tutorials, please show your support by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay connected on all my upcoming videos. For the background, I've chosen three colors, permanent yellow, sap green and viridian. As I'll only require a small amount of each pigment, I'm just adding a dab of each to my palette. Start by wetting your brush, then mix it with a yellow pigment. This mix should be somewhere between thick and watery in consistency. To give the Viridian shade a more natural look, I'm blending in some of the remaining yellow on my brush, creating a mixture with the same consistency as the yellow pigment. Continuing without rinsing my brush, I'm creating a mixture of the sap green pigment with the same consistency as the other two pigments. With these steps, we've created three different shades. Now I'll take a bit of Viridian mixture and add a touch of yellow to it, resulting in this lovely shade. Using my silver brush, black velvet oval mop brush, I'm wetting the background, making sure the water spreads evenly without creating puddles. If any puddles appear, simply use a brush or tissue to remove the extra water from the paper. When adding water, focus only on the area around the bird and avoid wetting the bird itself. Once the paper is wet, I'm starting by dropping the yellow pigment in a few spots, leaving white spaces between them. Then I'm using Viridian to accentuate the bottom part of the beak and the surrounding feather area. The toucan's feathers are white here, so adding the darker pigment enhances the contrast. Throughout the background, I'm ensuring there's still white space and dropping the pigment to evoke a leafy effect. With my brush loaded with sap green, I'm repeating the process. I'm 
I'm applying the lighter shade to the lower part and the edges. I'm adding paint blobs around, but it's important to maintain a wet paper to achieve the desired smooth blend. Hard edges can occur if the paper dries out. If your paper starts drying, pause and allow it to dry completely. Then reapply a wash of water with a light hand and continue dropping the paints. If the paint spreads into an undesired area, use a clean damp brush to lift it off. You can then dab it with a tissue. Using the remaining green on my palette, I'm painting the leaf, creating a slightly darker edge and a lighter bottom. As my paper is still damp, I'm using a touch of Viridian to make the edge more defined, adding depth outside the white part and giving it extra emphasis. I'm cleaning my palette and adding a bit of permanent yellow, orange and permanent rose. For the black part, I'll be using clear violet. I'm creating a slightly watery mixture of the yellow pigment and using it to paint the beak. I'm mixing some orange with the yellow and adding it to the center and bottom of the peak, then gently blending the edges. I'm then dropping a thicker mixture of permanent rose created using minimal water onto the bottom part of the beak. It's important that the layer underneath is still wet when applying this color. Using the same mixture, I'm creating a thin line on the upper part of the beak. Adding a touch of orange to the mixture, I'm intensifying the vibrancy in the same area. After cleaning my brush, I'm loading it with orange pigment to paint the triangular area around the eye, being careful not to let any paint touch the eye itself. I'm using a size 8 round brush, but you can opt for a finer brush for better control in adding these details. To soften the bottom edge, I'm using a clean damp brush. Taking more orange pigment with a small amount of water, I'm painting around the eye and the corners to provide a sense of depth. Now I'll use some permanent rose and replicate the same process. Add water to the violet, creating a fairly watery mixture and use this to paint the black section of the bird. While painting, be sure to follow the direction of the feathers and avoid random strokes. For the region below the white feathers, use squiggly strokes to create the appearance of feathers within the white area. Apply this pigment across the entire black region and when you approach the edges, incorporate a few loose feather-like strokes.
If you observe any white area on an object, you'll notice it's never truly white. There are shades of other colors that create shadows. To portray this, for the white section of this bird, I'm using Payne's Gray. I'm creating a diluted mixture and applying it below the eye and about halfway into the white area using a curved stroke. I'm using a clean damp brush to soften the edges. Additionally, I'm introducing a touch of pigment just above the violet area. Next, I'm taking more pigment, slightly less diluted to make it darker, and applying the shade under the beak and around the eye to enhance the contrast and depth. Now using a smaller round brush, we'll add the finer details of the eye. I'm using a size 2 round brush. After loading it with the violet pigment, I'm carefully painting the inner circle of the eye, leaving the highlighted part untouched. If you do end up painting the highlighted area, once the paint has dried, you can use white gouache to paint the highlights. After the inner circle has dried, apply a diluted mixture of ultramarine blue to the outer circle. If necessary, you can lighten it by lifting color from certain spots. Lastly, with slightly less water added to the same pigment, I'm painting around the outer circle to enhance depth and definition. I'm cleaning my palette and adding some yellow ochre and burnt umber pigment to paint the branch. Add water to the yellow ochre and then paint the entire branch with it. I'm not going to make this area very detailed as it is not the focal point. Mix a little burnt umber with yellow ochre and load your brush with it. Since the branch is in a tube shape, apply a few curved strokes to represent its form. I'm taking some burnt umber and again painting curved strokes with it. To darken certain areas, I'm taking some pale grey and mixing it with the burnt umber to create a darker value and dropping this mixture in a few places. If you find it necessary, you can lift off paint from certain areas. As you observe the white area, you'll notice it now appears three-dimensional. Our aim in painting is to craft the illusion of three-dimensional forms with a two-dimensional drawing. I'm using some more paints grey to darken the area. I'm painting up to the middle of the white area and then gently blending it to create a smooth transition. Now, let's enhance the contrast of the black area on the bird. To achieve this, I'm mixing paints grey and violet with a minimal amount of water. With this mixture, I'll repeat the technique we used earlier with the violet mixture. I'm applying strokes through the area following the direction of the feathers to create a feather-like effect. Using a slightly more concentrated paints grey mixture, I'm painting the bird's body beneath the branch. I'm adding strokes in a way that allows glimpses of violet in a few spots, giving the area dimension. By incorporating more paints grey to the mixture, I'm adding a few additional strokes. During this stage, pay attention to the definition of all lines. For instance, I'm refining the edge of the leaf by carefully painting around it. This is the point where you can address these finer details. It is also crucial to ensure the body of the bird flows seamlessly.
Moving on, with a fine brush, I am combining violet and paints grey and using it to paint specific areas within the inner part of the eye. I am also using this mixture to paint the black areas of the beak. While I am using a direct brush approach, you can opt to draw a guideline with a pencil first if you prefer. For the top part of the beak, I am outlining a curve. Afterward, I am rinsing my brush to pull the pigment towards the center. I am also lifting a bit of paint from the bottom part. Now, I am mixing a little orange with paints grey. With my rigger brush, I am crafting slightly overlapping dashes that run down the lower section of the top part of the beak. Although I didn't record this specific step, I have used the same mixture of paints grey and violet to paint the area we outlined while drawing. Subsequently, I am using a thicker mixture of only paints grey to paint along the border and then smoothening it out. Lastly, I am adding a denser mixture of violet and paints grey to paint the upper part of the eye and the lower border. For the feet, I am using a blend of ultramarine blue and paints grey. To enhance the feet's appearance, I am using paints grey and violet pigment to paint their borders, creating depth. You might notice that the leaf shape isn't perfectly defined here. To address this, I am using a thick mixture of burnt umber to negatively paint around the leaf. I am then smoothing the edge to blend it with the branch. The same technique is being applied to this area as well. Next, I am using sap green to paint the top part of the leaf and the area near the branch. Adding a touch of Viridian to the sap green, I am applying it along the border. For the lower part, I am combining paints grey with green. I am also applying a layer of this mixture to the top of the leaf and gently softening the edge. Our vibrant token painting is now complete. I hope you enjoyed this creative journey as much as I did. Remember, art is all about the joy of creation. I can't wait to have you join me in our next video. If there's a specific topic you'd like me to explore or paint, please drop a comment below. Your feedback and suggestions are invaluable to me. If you are eager to spread your artistic wings and explore another bird painting, check out the step-by-step -step Robin painting tutorial conveniently linked here. But before you go, I truly appreciate your support. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it enjoyable and informative. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. This way you'll never miss any of my upcoming creative adventures. Feel free to share this video with fellow artists who might find it inspiring. Together we can grow this creative community. Thank you for being a part of this artistic journey. Until next time, keep those brushes busy, stay inspired and I'll see you soon.